Hi, I'm Justin with Roland Pro AV, and welcome to this complete tutorial for Roland's V8 HD video switcher. Before we start, check that your V8 HD is up to date with the latest firmware, as we will cover new features that were added. For this overview, we will use version 2.04, which is available on the V8 HD product page. The V8 HD has 8 HDMI inputs, 3 HDMI outputs, and it's loaded with features. We will walk you through everything that this switcher can do, so if you only need help with a particular feature or the firmware update, please use the chapters in the video description to jump to that section. Starting with the top panel, there are three rows of buttons to select inputs. There is Program, which is what your audience sees, which is also shown here, and Preview, which you can use to set up your next shot before sending it to Program. These are commonly known as buses. The currently selected input for these rows are lit red for Program and green for Preview. Above that are the multifunction mode buttons, which by default choose the aux video source, but can also change picture-in-picture -picture sources, store and recall scenes, or run macros. To the right of that are controls for transitions, which you can use to cut, mix, or wipe from one input to another, and to the left are controls for the split screen output and visual effects. Above that are controls for the two picture-in-picture -picture windows, a downstream keyer for graphics, a knob to fade to black, a button to quickly capture still images from a video source, customizable user buttons, an LCD screen multi-view, which is also shown here, and menu controls. On the back, from right to left, are eight HDMI inputs. Inputs seven and eight have scalers, which are flexible with older equipment that does not output HD video. Another advantage to scalers is they resize and reposition the source, which can be helpful if you want to hide the taskbar from a laptop. The three HDMI outputs can be customized, but the recommended setup is program on one, aux on two, and multi-view on three. HDMI output three is a copy of the built-in LCD screen. If you open the menu, it will appear on that output as well. To the left of that are stereo RCA inputs and outputs for connecting an audio mixer and speakers. The quarter inch inputs are not for audio. They are actually for foot switch control. If you connect a compatible Boss foot switch, you can set it up to control the V8 HD. The USB memory port is used to import still images, update the firmware, and back up your settings. And the USB remote port is for connection to the RCS software for Windows and Mac, or the remote app for iPad. The power supply is the PSB7U. If you need a replacement, please contact your dealer or visit roland.com backstage and submit a parts request. On the side panel, there is an eighth inch output for headphones with the volume knob and the power switch. To open the menu, press the menu button and use the value knob to highlight a submenu and push the knob to enter it. Once you get to a setting you want to adjust, push the knob and the white line will highlight only the setting and you can rotate the value knob to adjust it. To confirm your selection, push the knob again. A trick to adjust settings faster is to hold down the knob while twisting it. Pressing the exit button will go up one menu level and pressing the menu button will exit it completely. When you connect video sources to the V8 HD's inputs, they will quickly appear on the multi-view. Inputs one through six need to have the same resolution as the system format setting in the system menu. By default, this is 1080p resolution. That means your sources can be either 1080i or 1080p. If your source is 480p or 720p, you can use inputs seven or eight and the scaler will resize it to 1080p. If most or all of your sources are 720p, change the system format on the VAHD to 720p. The VAHD will automatically convert frame rates, so your sources can be a mix of anything between 23.98 and 60 Hz. The default output frame rate is 59.94 Hz, and you can adjust this in the system menu to anything between 23.98 and 60. Note that all outputs match the system frame rate, and outputs 1 and 2 match the system format setting. Output 3 is always 1080p. In the video input menu, you can adjust each of the HDMI inputs. Input status shows you the detected resolution and frame rate of a source. You can also reassign an input to be a still image instead of HDMI, and there are additional settings to flip the image and adjust how it looks. Inputs 7 and 8 have additional settings for the scaler. EDID can be helpful for troubleshooting, otherwise leave it at its default internal setting. Note that when I scroll further down, the page number at the top of the menu changes, as some submenus have multiple pages. This page contains scaler settings for adjusting the size and position of the image, 
and the last page gives you additional controls for the color of the source. It's recommended to first adjust these settings on the source itself, especially if it's a camera, before making any adjustments here. In the video output menu, you can change the output assignments, which is required to set up the aux video output. For example, you have camera one on program for your live stream, but you have a PowerPoint as the aux output for an in-house projector, because the audience does not need to see the cameras on the projector. Note that more than one output can be assigned to the same bus. Color space and signal type can be adjusted when troubleshooting compatibility issues with other equipment. Otherwise, use the default settings. And finally, there are settings to adjust how the output looks. Note that the V8 HD does not have built-in USB streaming output. If you want to add streaming, connect an HDMI output to our UVC01 converter and assign the output to program. Doing this will add USB streaming to your V8 HD and you can connect it to any software that supports USB video and audio, like Roland Live Streamer, Roland Live Recorder, OBS Studio, Zoom, and more. You can also access all the audio settings using the menu. When we cover the RCS software later, we will show you the advantages to using the software mixer. In the audio input menu, you can mix and process audio from each HDMI input and the stereo RCA input. Each source can be processed with effects like equalization and compression. Input level adjusts the source in the audio mix. If you're not using an HDMI source's audio, you can mute it. Mono is helpful if an audio source is only on the left or right side on headphones and you want to center it. If you solo one or more sources, those are the only sources you'll hear on headphones, so make sure to turn solo off when you're done using it. Effect presets are a great starting point with equalization and compression for different applications and you can use delay to get individual sources in sync with the video. While you have full control of the noise gate, compressor, and equalizer using the menus, we will cover these in more detail in the RCS software section of this video. If you adjust the audio effects and it sounds worse than before, load the default effect preset for that source. The audio output menu has settings for two different audio mixes. Master output is your main mix. It has a limiter, which can prevent loud audio from distorting, as well as an equalizer and compressor for the entire mix. The aux mix, which can either be linked or separate from the aux video output, only has a limiter plus a delay setting. Within this is the aux send menu. Common uses for the aux mix is to create either a copy of the main mix at a different output level, or to create a mix minus, which emits some audio sources, like music that you may need to replace later before uploading to a video sharing website. In the aux send menu, you can adjust the level of the stereo RCA input that's being sent to the aux mix. By default, this is independent of this input's level in the main mix because it is pre-fader, which we'll cover in a bit. The default setting for aux send video is auto, which means that only the embedded audio from the current aux video source is sent to the aux audio bus at its current level. When you change the aux send video setting from auto to manual, you can choose the level of each HDMI source going to the aux mix, independent of the main mix. The aux effect settings take this a step further where you can choose if the audio is sent pre or post fader, where the fader is the input level setting for a source, or dry, which bypasses any audio processing, like the equalizer or compressor. And in the output assign menu, you can choose which mix each output will use. The audio follows video menu is a helpful tool. Here, you can enable this for each individual source. The basic idea is, if you can see it, you can hear it. When a video source appears on program, either as the full screen background source or in a picture in picture window, the HDMI audio is unmuted until you no longer see it on program. You can also link the RCA input to a video source, but for most workflows, this is not recommended. Now that we covered video and audio setup, let's start switching inputs. While you can press different inputs on the program row to cut between them, it's best to first select it in preview and use the transition controls to swap preview with program to reduce mistakes and take advantage of mix and wipe transitions. The cut button is instantaneous, and auto and the T-bar control mix or wipe, whichever selected with the transition button. The auto button's timing can also be adjusted using the transition time menu. Note how program is now on the bottom row. By default, the V8HD switches in AB mode. If you prefer that the top row is always program and the bottom preview, you can change this to program preset mode using the panel operation setting in the system menu. Note here that preset is the same as preview and is not to be confused with preset memory scenes. For this section, I will briefly change this output assignment to aux. 
To switch the aux video source, make sure that the mode button is set to aux, and press the smaller source button to change it. Switching the aux source is always a cut transition, and it will not show any composition layers, which are your picture-in-picture -picture windows and downstream keyer overlay. But if you want it to be a copy of program at certain times, change the aux linked program setting in the system menu to manual link. Now your aux video output is a copy of program, including all transitions and composition layers. Pressing any aux source button will make it an independent aux output again. And when you press the currently selected aux source button, it will be linked again. The auto switching menu lets you automatically switch between inputs with custom timings you can set up or to a tempo. You can also use this to switch between preset memory scenes. You can have it switch in order or at random. And if you want to remove an input from auto switching, turn down its timing until it's off. You can also use the scan target setting to have auto switching change a picture in picture source instead of the background program source. Picture in picture is a window on top of your full screen background video source. With the V8 HD, they can be fully resized and cropped, and can even be used with the green screen or a graphic overlay. To start, I'll press the preview button for Picture in Picture 1. Before using the menu, I'll change its source using the mode buttons, and adjust the position using the knobs. If I push and twist these knobs, I can resize the window and zoom in on the source. Additional settings in the picture-in-picture -picture menu let me copy and swap settings with the other picture-in-picture -picture window, as well as crop the window in case I want a vertical rectangle or the green screen does not fit the entire camera shot. I can also customize the border around the window. If you want to use picture-in-picture -picture for a green screen or graphic overlay, change the picture-in-picture -picture type. We will cover keying in detail with the downstream keyer. When you're ready to take the picture-in-picture -picture to program, press the on button. You can adjust the length of the mix transition in the transition time menu. There is a separate setting for picture-in-picture. -picture. You may have noticed that the background source and picture-in-picture -picture window are switched independently. While you can press the auto and on buttons at the same time, if you want to link them together so that your transitions will swap everything in preview with everything in program, turn on effects transition sync in the system menu. If you only want to use this feature at certain times, you can reassign one of the user buttons to turn it on and off. There's also a split screen mode, which you can enable by pressing either of the split buttons and adjusting the position of your sources using the split knobs. Note how the input buttons on both rows are now red and you can switch the sources for each while in split mode. You can customize the position of the dividing line and the size of the border in the split VFX menu. Note that the split mode will appear on both program and preview as a cut transition. You cannot use a mix or wipe transition with it. If you want to fade to a split, Set up the picture-in-picture -picture windows to each take up a half of the screen and switch to them using a preset memory scene or macro, both of which we will cover later. Next is the DSK, or downstream keyer, which is used primarily to display graphics like someone's name, a logo, or any image where you want the background to be transparent and overlay it on top of your program video. Note that the downstream keyer layer is always on top, followed by picture-in-picture -picture 2, picture-in-picture -picture 1, and your program source. The layer order is fixed and cannot be changed. In the downstream key or menu, the default setting is self key. This means that you can use a luma key, which removes white or black, or chroma key, which removes a color. The default source is a still image containing a corner logo that says live. With the level and gain knobs turned all the way down, you can see that it has a black background, which disappears when I turn up the level. For most graphics, start with level until the target color disappears, and then fine tune with gain if needed. I will change this to HDMI input 8 which is a slideshow of graphics I created. Here you can see a limitation of Luma key. If I have a black background and black text, both are removed by the key effect. To get around this, I created graphics with green backgrounds because the chroma key can be used with more than just green screens. Change the downstream key or type to chroma. Note how nothing is happening when I adjust the knobs. I need to change the color from blue to green on the next page. Now I'm getting a good key when I adjust the level. If you're not getting good results, you can better match the color using the sampling marker. When you turn this on, a small cross will appear. Adjust the position using the settings until it is placed on the color you want to remove and select Sampling Execute. 
Note how the hue and saturation values have changed. This feature is especially important when setting up a green screen, saving you time with finding the best hue and saturation settings. The picture-in-picture -picture windows are also capable of Luma and Chroma Key. A great example of this is if you want to place a transparent graphic in the corner or resize it. Another is if you want a green screen shot of yourself in the corner while you present full screen content. And if your green screen does not fill the entire camera image, you can crop the picture-in-picture -picture window and create a clean overlay. There are two additional keyer types available only with the downstream keyer. Note that using these will automatically disable aux video output. They also do not use the level or gain knobs. The first is alpha key mode. This will overlay a PNG format still image with alpha channel. Only compatible still images are supported with this mode. For this section, I already imported a PNG image to still 2. We will cover importing still images in the next section. Remember earlier how Luma key was removing the text along with the background? With alpha channel, the image file has the transparency figured out beforehand, giving you a cleaner looking key without any color restrictions. To create compatible images, you will need image editing software like Photoshop to create them. The second is external key. This is an advanced feature that requires compatible graphics software and two inputs on the V8 HD. Your graphics software may call it external key, alpha key, or key and fill. The computer will output two video signals of the same graphic, the actual graphic as you see it on the computer screen, and a black and white silhouette of the same graphic. On the V8 HD, the key source is that silhouette, and the fill source is the actual graphic. We use two still images for this section, but alpha key mode is recommended for stills, as it only requires one still image file. No additional adjustments are needed. The silhouette acts as the alpha channel, telling the keyer what to remove. This is the best way to create a sequence of complex graphics with detailed edges or animations with no color restrictions. Earlier, we covered the split modes, which are actually part of the visual effects. In the split VFX menu, you can change the type to a variety of visual effects and use the menu settings or knob to adjust them. When the panel operation mode is AB, you can have two separate VFX, one for program and one for preview, and use the mix and wipe transitions to switch between them. If using program preset mode, only one visual effect is active at a time, and you can switch between the two that you set up, but you can only cut to them, as it is not possible to do a mix or wipe transition. And the output fade knob, by default, transitions the video to solid black or white, and fades out the audio as well. You can customize this in the system menu if you want to keep the audio, or cut to a still image. The V8 HD supports up to 8 still images stored internally. You can import still images from a USB flash drive using the still image menu, or you can capture a still image from a live video input using the capture image button and following the steps on the LCD screen. Note that this process will take some time, but your program output will not be interrupted. The Capture Image button is also a good way to quickly see your current still images. You can press the Capture Image or Exit buttons to exit that menu. Note that still images saved to internal storage increase the loading time when you power on the V8 HD again. If you do not need your still images after using the V8 HD, you can disable Store to Internal Storage in the Still Image menu. In addition to importing an image, you can save an image captured to a USB flash drive, as well as delete imported still images. Note that empty still image slots will not have an asterisk. When you load a still image, you will see a list of files on the flash drive. To import correctly, first format the USB flash drive and the VHD's USB memory menu. A drive with 16 gigabytes or less is recommended. The image file needs to have a name of up to 28 letters and numbers without any spaces, and the format added to the end. .bmp for bitmap, .jpg for jpeg, and .png for PNG files. The image's pixel dimensions also need to match the system format setting on the V8 HD. This means that if the V8 HD is set to 1080p or 1080i, the image needs to be 1920 by 1080 pixels, and if 720p, 1280 by 720. Note that software like Photoshop refers to these numbers as an image's dimensions, whereas video products typically consider them an image's resolution. In Photoshop, Resolution is typically the number of pixels per inch if you were to print an image on paper. 
As you've seen throughout this tutorial, a still image can be assigned to a video input, a picture-in-picture -picture source, a downstream keyer source, or even an output fade source. And note that all HDMI input sources and still images are active, so they do not need to be visible on the multi-view in order to use them with picture-in-picture -picture or the downstream keyer. The bottom half of the multi-view only shows the sources mapped to the input select buttons. Preset memories, which I will refer to as scenes, store and recall visual layouts and menu settings. Most of your settings are stored in a scene, so it's like a snapshot of your V8 HD. One way to use this creatively is to create different picture-in-picture -picture layouts and switch between them with a single button press. Note that the following menus are not affected by scene recalls. Preset memory, macro, sequencer, still image, freeze, auto switching, CTL EXP, USB memory, and system. You can also add dissolved transitions to scene recalls using the fade time setting in the preset memory menu. When it's set to 0.0, .0 seconds, it'll cut instead of dissolving. If you set a fade time higher than that and then recall a scene, it will dissolve out the picture-in-picture -picture and downstream keyer layers, dissolve to the new scene's input, and dissolve the layers back in. You can also enable or disable which layers are affected by this function. To prevent certain groups of settings from changing with scene recalls, you can use the load parameter settings, located further down the menu. For example, it may help to turn off the audio settings if you don't want those to be affected by scene recalls. Note that when you store a scene, it still stores the settings turned off in load parameter, they just won't be recalled. To recall a scene, press the mode button until memory is lit. The eight multi-purpose buttons next to it will turn blue. If no scene is saved to any of those buttons, it will be unlit. To create or overwrite a scene, set up your program layout and configure your settings. Press and hold one of the eight multi-purpose buttons until they flash, confirming the scene was written. To recall a scene, press any of the blue multi-purpose buttons. You can also save, load, and delete presets within the preset memory menu. Note that if you press an unlit scene button, it will load the default settings for the V8 HD. The number of memory setting will turn your A and B row buttons into scenes 9 through 24. Note that this disables program and preset input selection, but is useful if you only want to use scenes for your workflow. Macros are a list of commands that include switching between inputs, turning the downstream keyer on and off, audio adjustments, and much more. If you find yourself pressing several buttons to do a common task in your workflow, creating a macro will save you time and reduce mistakes. The V8 HD can store up to 100 macros, and each macro can also recall scenes and other macros, which open up the possibilities with this powerful feature. It's recommended to edit your macros using the RCS software, but you can also use the menu. Each macro contains up to 10 steps, which you can access using the list edit menu. Each step can take place either after or at the same time as the previous step. You can also move, copy, or delete steps. To test a macro while editing it, select Preview, and you can watch it to help determine if adjustments are needed. After the preview is complete, your settings will revert to their state before running the macro. To run macros from the hardware panel of the V8 HD, press and hold the Mode button until the eight multi-purpose buttons next to it turn orange. If there isn't a macro in any of these slots, the button will be unlit. Tap the multi-purpose button for the macro you want to run. Remember to wait for the macro to finish before pressing another multi-purpose button, or you'll interrupt the macro in progress. Although there are only eight buttons to run macros without using the RCS software, you can change the number of macros from eight to 24, just like you can with scenes. This will disable the A and B row buttons and give you 24 buttons with which to recall and run macros. In addition to that, because you can use up to 100 macros, there's an assign menu where you can choose which macros are assigned to the eight or 24 buttons. So when you create and edit them, they do not need to be laid out in order. The VA HD also has a sequencer mode, which lets you recall scenes, run macros, and even switch inputs from a list you set up beforehand. You can run the sequencer steps manually in order, you can jump to a specific step, or you can automate the sequence to follow timings that you set. To enter the sequencer mode, press the menu button and then go to sequencer. Before you turn the sequencer on, go to the list edit menu, where you can add steps to the list and move or copy steps within the existing list. Once you turn the sequencer on and exit the menu, you'll notice how that there's a menu overlay on the multi-view for sequencer mode. It's currently at the start of the sequence, and we can press the auto button to manually advance through the sequence, starting with demo macro one, followed by demo macro two. Notice then when I get to step two, the cup button lights up. This allows me to go to the previous step. 
I can also jump to a step in the sequencer by highlighting it with the value knob and pushing enter. Note that if you use the cut button or the jump function, it will cut to the end of that step. No animation or transition will be visible. When you press auto again to go to the next step, transitions will resume appearing as you move through your sequence. Footswitch control is a creative way to upgrade your workflow. Using footswitches and expression pedals from Roland's boss line, you can control just about anything without using your hands. For this overview, we will focus on the footswitches and show you how to set up the Boss FS6. Using a quarter inch balanced TRS cable, connect the compatible footswitch to the back of the V8 HD and open the CTL EXP menu. Set the type to CTL for footswitches and EXP for expression pedals. The FS6 and FS7 have two buttons, so they can use both CTL A and B. Note that the FS5U will not control CTL A. Because it only has one button, it uses CTL B. Next, you need to choose a category of commands. You can do things like recall a scene or macro, output a still image, or remotely press a button, like auto or picture in picture. Let's choose the take category and choose cut as the value. Now when I press the foot switch, it's just like pressing the cut button. The user buttons are another way to do more with the V8 HD. Here, I enabled auto switching without using the menu. On page two of the system menu, you'll see what they're currently set to. They have a similar layout to the CTL settings, but the user buttons can do things like freeze frame and toggle effects transition sync, as we mentioned earlier. A user button can also control a compatible Atomos brand recorder over HDMI. More information is available in the reference manual, available on the support tab of the V8 HD product page. Panel lock is another incredibly useful feature found in the system menu. You can disable specific buttons and knobs on the V8 HD, which is perfect for preventing accidental button presses. For example, if you only use inputs 1 through 6, you can disable the buttons for 7 and 8, which reduces the risk of switching to an empty input. And if you end up needing those buttons later and forgot that you locked them, the menu button will flash when you try to use it, indicating that panel lock is enabled. There are additional settings in the system menu to customize the multi-view, recalibrate the T-bar, and reset all your settings to their default. More information is available in the reference manual. The RCS software gives you access to all of the controls and menu settings on a Windows or Mac computer using a USB 2.0 Type-B cable. Remember that the USB ports on the V8 HD do not output video or audio. The USB remote port is only for connection to the control software. There is also an iPad version of this software called the Remote App. If you have an iPad with Lightning, you will need what's called a camera adapter to convert the iPad connector to USB Type-A. If you have an iPad with USB-C, you can use the USB 2.0 Type-B to Type-C cable. Once you connect to the software, the main screen has many of the controls found on the V8 HD itself. But you also find some of the advanced features have a dedicated button, like effects transition sync. And if you want to resize the software window, use the zoom menu. Let's click the setup button for picture in picture one. Note how you have access to all of the picture in picture settings and the position knobs are instead a window that you can drag and resize. You may also find that it's easier to use the sampling marker for chroma keys by dragging the position cursor. So here, I'll set it to chroma, change the color to green, and turn on the sampling marker. You can see how the controls are the same as you would find in the LCD menu, with the added flexibility of using a keyboard and mouse to set it up. Along the right, click on audio to open the audio mixer. Here, you can mix all of the audio inputs and outputs that we covered earlier. If you click on the setup button for a channel, it opens the audio submenu for it and you can see a graphical layout of effects like the noise gate, compressor, and equalizer. The noise gate mutes the audio when it falls below the threshold level. Increasing the release time can make this effect sound more natural, but setting it too high can make the ambient noise noticeable. The compressor lowers the level of audio above the threshold level. The ratio determines the amount of reduction, which can function as a limiter when turned all the way up, which is helpful for loud sources. The attack and release times are how long it takes for the compressor to turn on and off once it crosses the threshold. Check the presets for recommendations. Because the compressor lowers the levels of the source audio at times, auto gain will compensate for this, but you can also manually apply gain. The high pass filter and equalizer adjust the levels of low, mid, and high frequencies. Use the high pass filter with voices that have a lot of low end, especially when using a dynamic microphone. You can drag the three dots to adjust the equalizer bands, 
or use the settings above them. For the mid-band, you can also adjust its cue to make it wider or narrower. While the presets will work well for most applications, it's important to use your ears when adjusting these settings, as you will likely need to adjust the threshold settings based on the audio source. If you have a USB MIDI controller connected, you can also right-click on any solo, mute, or level fader and map it using MIDI Learn. Use the MIDI control menu to first set up your controller. You can also show, hide, and clear the mapping. You can also recall scenes using the RCS software. You can access them at any time in the preset memory section at the top of the software, or you can click the memory button to bring up the preset memory screen. You'll see scenes arranged in three banks of eight scenes each. Each scene contains information, including the source and any picture-in-picture -picture or downstream keyer layers that are turned on. You can also display a condensed layout of 24 scenes. To rename a scene, just click the Name Edit button and the scene that you want to rename. You can also rename inputs and still images by going to the multi-view label edit in the system menu. You can also edit and run macros using the RCS software. Click the macro button and you'll see the execute layout with the macros arranged in two banks of 50 macros each. You can run the macros with these buttons. Click the edit layout button and you'll find the macros arranged in five banks of 20 macros each with the edit window below for the currently selected macro. Click the Add button to create the first step for the macro and choose its function. Once added, you can edit it with the Setup button. You can also click on the Name Edit button to change the name of the currently selected macro in the editor. Or you can use the Macro menu and go to Name Edit and change the name that way. You may find that editing and naming macros is easier with the RCS software than using the menu so it's recommended if creating complex ones like animated picture-in-picture -picture windows. You can also access the sequencer using the RCS software. Click the sequencer button to open the sequencer screen and turn it on. You'll see the execute layout with the current list of sequencer steps in the controls. If you click the edit layout button, you can add steps to the sequencer by clicking the add new function button and rearrange them by dragging the move arrows. You can also jump to a step in the sequencer by clicking the jump button and clicking the step that you want to jump to. To update the firmware on your VHD, go to proav.roland.com, click on Video Switchers under Products, choose the VHD, and scroll down a bit until you see Downloads. Here, you can download the latest firmware and RCS software. Click on System Program, also known as Firmware. This page contains detailed information on every update, as well as steps on how to update, with the download button at the bottom. A 16 gigabyte or less USB flash drive is recommended for the update. Connect it to the back of the V8HD and format it in the USB memory menu, if you have not already. Once the update is downloaded, unzip the update file and copy it to your USB flash drive. Make sure that the file is not in a folder on the USB flash drive and needs to be in the main directory. Power off the V8HD, connect the USB flash drive, and hold the Picture in Picture 2 on button, the Downstream Keyer on button, and the Capture Image button while you power it on again and wait for it to load the update menu. You will see color bars on the LCD screen and it will ask you to press Enter with the value knob. When finished, the LCD screen will display complete. Please restart. Power the V8HD off and back on again. Note that the first time you turn it on after an update, it may take a bit longer to load. That concludes this complete tutorial on the V8HD. We hope this video was helpful and showed you some new things to try. If you have any questions or need support, please visit roland.com backstage, register your V8HD, and submit a support ticket. There are additional guides available on our website and knowledge base. The link to the V8 HD Quick Start Guide in the video description is a great place to start. Thank you for watching.